Well, the, the, um, as I say, Ovum's not a great fan of the use of the word smart because it implies that if you're not doing this digital stuff, you're therefore done, which is offensive in some ways. But, um, but the idea of smart um, has a lot of depth behind it when you look at what, what the label means. Um, and, and it's all around the idea of using information technology to make better decisions um, through the flows of information real time associated with the, the planning and construction and operation of a city. So it goes right into the digital planning in the first place, um, through to the logistics of construction, um, making construction processes more efficient, enabling cities to be built with less materials, um, monitoring the processes such that less energy is used and less pollution is created in the construction phase, and then right into the operational phase of the city. Um, and new concepts, for example, in Songdo, all of the rubbish generated by businesses and, and residential buildings is plumbed underneath the city in a pneumatic um, uh, extraction process. So it all goes out of the city to a waste treatment plant, which is on the mainland, um, without the need for rubbish trucks to drive around in the city, for example. So you've made the whole process of waste disposal more efficient, less environmentally damaging, and there's not rubbish trucks driving around making noise, congesting traffic and generating pollution, etc. So right in the design of the city, then um, these new cities are smart in that sense, that um, there is more systemic thought put into the whole operation of the city, rather than each part of it left to grow as an independent process or system in a topsy-turvy kind of a manner. Um, so buildings have a more intelligent use of heating and cooling, uh, they generate less CO2 emissions, you know, they're, they're digitally wired so that the citizens can access services more easily from government, so they don't have to travel so much. You can have education coming through your high-definition de high television into your apartment, so you don't have to necessarily go to the other side of the city for that one lecture on accountancy or whatever. Um, so. The, the net product of all of that is a city that people have to travel less and when they do travel they use more efficient means to do so. Um, services are um, more available at any point in time and place when citizens require it um, and the infrastructure of the city is just more efficiently run, uses less energy, generates less waste. So in, in our report, uh, is your city smart enough? Um, we provide four recommendations for ways for city leaders and indeed for companies providing services into the digital city and digital society space to think. And the, first, the four recommendations are, the first one is um, it genuinely requires inspirational leadership. So the first um, behaviour which we encourage is inspire. So these are long-term visions which require um, the painting of a vision of a more economically, socially and sustainable future and the building of a team of people to chase that vision, which is pure leadership. So in inspirational leadership is the first behaviour which is critical. The second we believe is um, we call leverage. So. Cities that will move faster in this digital city world are cities that leverage proven existing solutions from other places around the world, um, as opposed to reinventing the wheel and building things from scratch. Um, and this is uh, one of the most exciting developments in this area is, is cloud computing and the ability to, um, to source the services and systems that you need to build a digital city from the cloud. They already exist, they already operate at scale, um, and they don't need to be rebuilt again. In fact, it's faster and more efficient to use these services from the cloud than it is to go through the traditional route of each city custom building its own systems for transport or for health or whatever. So leverage is the second behaviour. The third is um, collaboration, so collaborate. 
Um, as, as I've said, there's a lot of a rising competition between cities to attract inbound investment, etc. But there's also increasing collaboration, a kind of um, um, competitive collaboration between peer cities to share ideas and experiences and solutions. So collaborating with peer cities around the world uh, is a very important part of this behaviour. And it's all about sharing ideas, but also locating those resources and services which can be leveraged so that it's faster and less, um, less funding and less energy is required to actually develop the next digital city um, system. And the final um, behaviour is what we call nurture, which is a, a conscious strategy to nurture digital society um, as a core part of a digital city strategy. So digital society is all about creating the, um, the building blocks in terms of um, uh, network connectivity, but also the encouragement for citizens to use the modern technologies of Web 2.0, um, the Facebook, the Google, these um, ubiquitous platforms to form groups and communities within the city in order to advance the interests of, of citizens. So simple things like um, community websites um, uh, uh, can be encouraged which, which build social capital, for example, to, um, to coordinate carers within the community for elderly people, for example. There's a simple thing which is all about encouraging people to use these technologies to form communities to strengthen social fabric within the city, which has the big advantage of building community and encouraging social strength in ways that government doesn't have to do it by providing a service. So we call this co-production. So um, nurturing co-production um, in the digital society is a critical part of, um, of, of building a smarter city um, because it's about making citizens um, more resourceful and more independent and building social capital in the community, um, which is an important part of making cities more livable and, and having um, strength in the community. Um, and, and there needs to be a conscious effort to nurture that as part of a, of, of a digital city strategy. It's not just about the transport and the education and the healthcare and the rubbish collection and all these other things. It's also about using technology in a designed way to make the city more livable, more fun, to make sure that all sectors of the community are looked after and participate in the growth and development of the city. Not just the wealthy people that can afford to buy new apartments with digital connectivity and big flat screen TVs. So the critical thing is to use the technology to, um, to, to lift all people within the city in terms of their economic, social and environmental sustainability.